Okay, this is just a quick uh, how-to on adding a control surface into Ableton. Um, a lot of people would like to use their MIDI controller in Ableton, but would also like to have their knobs and sliders that are on their controller automatically assigned. Uh, obviously, that can be a very helpful um, feature because when you open up a uh, instrument and you just add a, an instrument to Ableton, uh, you want to be able to mess with that and, and change things automatically. So you'll get this little blue hand um, on the instrument, and that means that this is assigned to my knobs. I can just turn any knob on my controller, which is what I'm doing right now, and it will adjust that instrument. And then if I add another instrument here, um, and I go down here, it's automatically adjusting the new instrument. I didn't have to assign anything. And then when I go back to the first instrument, it's still doing it. Um, and you don't even actually have to have the select, it's just the channel selected. So when you switch channels, it automatically assigns. That's super helpful, and here's how you do it. I have, for instance, a Behringer Motor 49 uh, controller that has eight knobs and eight sliders, eight drum pads, um, and I want them to be assigned automatically. Well, in live, in preferences, you'll see that you can select your control surface. Motor 49 keyboard is there. If yours is here, you don't have to do this. You just click it, and it's automatically assigned. But there's a ton of controllers that are not out there. For instance, mine was not until I added it. So this, I wanted to show up in that list. And how do I do that? That's that's the important part. There is a folder on your in your computer. This is for the Mac. Um, there's obviously there's one for Windows as well. I don't know exactly what it is, but if you um, Google it, you'll find it. Uh, on mine, it is on my uh, Macintosh hard drive, under my library, under Ableton, or under Preferences, I'm sorry, uh, and then under Ableton. Uh, and then you select whatever the current version of Ableton you have installed, just as a note, when you do upgrade, a new folder will be created, and you may have to go to your old folder and drag your script into the new folder. So it's in your you know, Live 10.1.3, under User Remote Scripts. Um, and you want to create a folder within that folder with whatever name of you want your controller to be named. If it's a keyboard, like mine Motor 49 keyboard, if you have some other controller that's not listed, you can still do this. Um, and then you want to make a copy of this user configuration.txt and put it in here. I've already done that. And then what goes in there? This is the fun part. So a few things to, that are very important. Number one. MIDI channels are from 0 to 15. Um, we number MIDI channels normally from 1 to 16, so MIDI channel 1 is MIDI channel 0, MIDI channel 16 is MIDI channel 15, um, what we would call MIDI, MIDI channel 7 would be in here as MIDI channel 6, so you subtract 1 from the MIDI channel, that's how you do it. Um, the next thing that's important is the global channel. Um, if you do not have a channel listed, in other words, if the channel is listed as negative 1, like it is here, um, the global channel is assumed. Um, my global channel is 2, so I have it in here as 1 because of what I just explained above. Um, this is really important as well. Uh, the name of the controller that's listed as input name has to match identically the name that shows up in Ableton when it's controlled, or when it's connected, I'm sorry. Um, and you can see that uh, it'll be this name here. So your control will show up here. This word for word, every character has to be identical, um, is what you add under the name for input and output. Output obviously is used if you want to send signals back to your MIDI controller, which most of the time you do. Um, and then let's move on to the assignments. So pads, if you have pads, um, you want to give them what the MIDI note is. Uh, in this case, the MIDI note for C1, uh, which is where most drum kits start, is 24, and it goes up from there. So 24, 25, blah, 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 up to 39. That's the 16 pads. Um, so this is C1, this is C sharp one, this is D1, this is D sharp one. Um, like I said, most 
of your drum kits to start at C1. So if yours looks just like mine, you should be fine. Um, and then the next step is where you really want your encoders and sliders. So your encoders are going to, you're going to put the MIDI control number that they throw. And this is where some people have difficult because they don't know what to put here. The way you find that out is like this. You click this MIDI up here. Um, this is where you would normally assign controller um, surfaces or controller controls to different areas. Um, you just select and say, if I want this or this, I'm going to then you twiddle the knob and it'll show up here. Well, just pick some place random and just start twiddling the knobs. So this says CC71. As you see over here, I have my encoder set to 71. The next one, this is encoder 2, is 72. The next one's 73. The next one's 74. And as you see, that goes all the way up to 78. My last encoder is 78, which is how I have these numbers, 71 through 78. So that's a quick way to get those numbers. Um, I have them all on channel 2, which means that's the global channel, which means I can just leave all these negative 1. I could put 1 in here for each of these, but there's no need to. Um, the answer to this question is normally absolute, but you, your controller may differ. So um, on the Behringer controller, it, the answer is absolute. It should be in your manual as to how um, you want your uh, how you want them assigned. Um, when in doubt, leave it as absolute. And then down here, the volume sliders. Exact same process. So if I start moving a volume slider. You see this is CC20, or let's see, the first one is CC21, then 22, then 23, then 24. That's how I have these assigned, 21 through 28. Um, and then I have them as negative 1 for, um, the def to, for the global channel, which is, as we know, 2 on mine. This is just how mine is set up. Obviously, I've moved my pads to channel 10, which is why this says 09. Um, it's whatever your controller is set up like. Uh, this is this just allows Ableton to automatically assign stuff. Um, so we did the encoders, we did the volume sliders. I've never used bank buttons at all. Uh, we did the pads. Um, the only other thing that's uh, left here, uh, depending on if they exist on your controller, and you can check them the exact same way using the, the MIDI assign feature, um, is uh, a master volume slider, mine is, fi is 53. Um, and obviously it's on channel 2, which is a global channel. Um, and then if you have send knobs or track arms, most of those will also be set to absolute. And then your transport controls, this will be your stop and play and record and fast forward and loop buttons if you have them. Um, again, you're going to get this number and you're going to get it the same way. If I just click stop, you see that's CC117 and I have my um, stop button set to 117. So that's it. As long as you have this name correct and all of this assigned correctly, well, like I said, you can get those assignments out of, um, and as a matter of fact, just so you know, see how this says note C1? Um, that's if I hit a pad. Uh, that's why I wanted to tell you that these are the numeric values for the notes. Don't put C1 in here, it won't work. Um, and there are charts out there for that if you just want to Google the uh, MIDI note values that information is available there's a chart that shows you all the different values um, and that's pretty much it and when you're done you'll be able to control uh, you'll be able to use your controller as a control surface right here it'll, it'll show up in the list um, and you'll be able to control these. Obviously, you, once you're done setting everything up, you want to save the file, close and open Ableton um, for it, and then select your controller here to make sure that it works. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them if I can. Um, this is just one to help people understand where to get these numbers from and how to set this up correctly. Have a good day.